Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel if you are new. Hello, my name is V. I post nail tutorials every Thursday and Sunday at 8 15 a.m. Central Time. Getting right into today's video, I'm starting off by just filing off the existing design. She did have a little bit of a mishap on two of her nails. I can't remember what she said happened, but at the end of the day, she had to cut them off. So I am going to be just sharing with you guys the fill process removing the design and then we're going to be fixing those two broken nails i'm just basically going to be reapplying the tip and applying the acrylic all over again as you would when doing a full set so for this step i am using my kiara sky rechargeable e-file i have her at a speed of about 8,000 rpms along with that i'm using their five in one carbide bit this one is medium grit in the color rose gold but they have fine grit and coarse grit as well if you guys are interested in any of those and they also have them available in different colors so i'm just gonna go ahead and just gently remove that i'm not using a crazy amount of pressure very very light when it comes to it because i just want to remove the top coat and the design i'm not trying to remove any of the existing acrylic so again i'm gonna go ahead and finish that off Once we're done gently removing that, I am going in with my mandrel bit and sanding band, both from Profiles Backstage. I have now moved my e-file speed down to 4,000 RPMs. That's my comfortable speed for my prep. And I'm just lightly buffing off the shine from the natural nail, while at the same time, I'm trying to blend that acrylic into the natural nail so that when I go in with my fill, the application is nice and smooth and there's no like crazy ridges that I need to infill. Now for the two nails that she had to remove, I am going in and fully prepping her entire natural nail. As you can see, her free edge of her nail kind of got damaged a little bit as well. If you are familiar with her hands on my videos, you probably will note that her nails are always in really good condition. Unless something happens like this, she's normally good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and just reapply them as I normally would. Again, 4000 RPMs, very light pressure when it comes to prepping the nail. You just want to buff off the shine. We are not trying to damage the nail. I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of the nails doing the exact same process.
Once I'm done buffing off the shine, I am going in with my needle bit. This one is from Amazon. You can find them linked in my Amazon storefront. Sometimes I do forget to link products. I'm so sorry, especially right now. My pregnancy brain has gotten full term, so I do apologize for that. But you can find it in my Amazon storefront along with tons of other products that I absolutely love from Amazon. I've used all of the products on my list for years and definitely stand by them so make sure you guys check that out now once i'm done with that i'm going in with my cuticle ball bit just gently buffing off the cuticle without having to trim or nip anything off for both i have my e-file at four to five thousand rpms i've found that with the cuticle ball bit five thousand works better than four so just a quick little disclaimer very very gentle again on my pressure i try not going over the exact same spot for too long because that can also cause heat spike and you want to avoid that at all costs because if you've done it on yourself it definitely hurts now for our next step i am going ahead and apply the tips to the nails that are broken these are the universal tips from not polish full sculpted pre-shaped in the stiletto shape i love 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 these tips they are super easy to work with very easy to apply these sizes are perfect, so I'm just applying that with my Young Nails brush on glue, pressing that firmly into the free edge of her nail, and then I'm going to be using my craft scissors to trim them down to the length that she already has on her other nails. And I accidentally glued the tip to my finger, <laughs> so sorry about that, but I just gently like pulled away and it came right off. So now I'm taking my Tommy Taylor peel and stick file and I'm going to be shaping those nails into the super sharp stiletto shape that we like to do on her. And then I'm going to go ahead and shape the rest of her nails as well. I like to go in and reshape the nails no matter how good they look because especially with stiletto nails, as they grow out, the width of her nail bed is going to grow out as well and you want to make sure you make them narrow to your liking and to the client's liking like you did the first time you applied the nails. So that's kind of a good little thing to keep an eye out when you are doing fills. You always want to reshape the nails. I'm just going to go ahead and go back and forth until they are super sharp and narrow. And then we're going to be moving on to our fill. Now we are going to dehydrate and thoroughly clean the nail off with a lint-free wipe and some swipe from Young Nails. Both are linked in my Amazon storefront. I'm not sure if swipe is still available on there, otherwise you can purchase it from Young Nails themselves. I'm just really rubbing that in, especially in the natural nail area, as that helps as a dehydrator. And you definitely want to remove any excess oils from the nail, that's going to help with the adhesion. I'm going in with my primer. This is a triple X bond primer from Not Polish, and I'm going to be doing two coats of that on the natural nail area. I'm really rubbing that in, making sure that it's getting into all the natural nail, and then I'm going in with that second coat. And of course, I'm doing that on the other hand as well. I'm going in with my discontinued glitter that I have used on her nails for the past few videos. So I'm going in and applying that where it needs to be. For the fill, I'm taking a very small bead of that, applying it, blending it down towards the acrylic and pushing it up into the cuticle area. And then immediately after that, I'm taking some clear acrylic 
and encapsulating that glitter just to get it done a lot quicker. I have both powders readily available to me right then and there, so I go ahead and just do both steps at the same time. Now this is First Nude from Not Polish, and I'm just applying that for the ring finger and the index finger, I believe. Again, small bit of acrylic, and then I kind of build it out anywhere that needs a little bit more product. The middle finger is going to be full glitter as we had previously done. Now I've gotten a lot of questions on this glitter. Like I mentioned, it is discontinued. Unfortunately, the brand does not make it anymore. However, there are tons of other companies that have similar looking ones. Profiles Backstage has these loose mylar glitters that you can use in place of these. Super, super cute. I'll link them down below. And Not Polish actually has a glitter powder mix called night out which is also very similar and definitely recommend both they're super super pretty very sparkly and i'll leave both of them linked down below if you guys are interested in that so i'm just applying that on to the entire nail and then i'm going to be encapsulating it again using clear acrylic from not polish now for today's video i'm actually using a different brush i realized that i've been using it in a few of my past videos and i have not mentioned it this is the profiles backstage new brush in the size 12 i've talked about their brushes in the past a lot but they came out with this new one it is a size 12 which is the size that i've been loving it is black and it has a few crystals right there where the metal meets the handle and I am obsessed with it. I like it. The quality of their brushes are really, really good. The size is perfect. I highly recommend it if you guys are looking for a brush. I'm going to go ahead and apply the ombre design onto the index finger i'm using that glitter just at the tip and then i'm going in with first nude up at the cuticle area and blending it down into that glitter It's too late now to turn around and back again I made my bed and now I lay my head in it And I'm sorry I'm not perfect but I knew that I wouldn't be I guess it's for the best you know the worst Now, I'm not showing you guys the process on the other hand because it was basically the exact same thing you guys have been seeing on her nails in the past few videos. So I'm going in and now and filing the nails. I'm using my rechargeable e-file from Kiara Sky. I have it at about 9 to 10,000 RPMs for this step. And then again, I'm using my rose gold medium grit 5-in-1 bit. I'm going very, very gentle on my pressure around the cuticle area, making sure that everything is nice and flush. And then I like to go vertically up and down the rest of the nail. I feel like I have better motion and control of my handpiece, which is absolutely what you want. You don't want it to skip or anything like that. 
I've done that before. Trust me, it terrifies your client and it terrifies you as well. So again, around the cuticle area and then vertically up and down the length of the nail. Once I'm done using my e-file, I'm going back in with my hand file and just making sure that everything is nice and crisp. These were already pre-shaped and then I shaped them again and now I'm shaping them for a third time. I just want to make sure that when I applied my acrylic, I didn't mess any of the shape up. It's just the way my brain works. I want everything to be nice and perfect. I feel like at the end of the day, you want to make sure that they are as best as possible. And if you skip that last file, chances are that you will have missed something that you shouldn't have. So now I'm going in and prepping the nails for our nail art application. I'm using my sponge buffer from Profiles Backstage and I am going in on those nails. I want to make sure that the surface is super smooth as we are going to be doing some intricate nail art for today's video. And I want to make sure that everything is smooth enough so that when I go and I draw or apply my nail art, everything goes on really easily. You want your brush to easily glide on the surface and this is going to help get that surface super, super smooth. So I'm just going in, repeating that on the rest of the nails. Now I'm taking a lint free wipe and some swipe once again and thoroughly cleaning the surface of the nail. This is gonna help remove any excess dust or anything like that and prep for your nail art. Now for this hand, my client did not know what she wanted. So we're doing two separate designs on each hand. I'm sure you guys saw it in the thumbnail, but she couldn't decide exactly what she wanted to do. And she was like, you know what, let's just do both. <laughs> so I'm all for mixed match nails. I love it. I feel like it brings out your creativity and some people might not be fans, but I have nothing against mixed match nails. So for her left hand, we are doing some camo. And I've actually done a video on this in the past. It's super, super simple. I feel like a lot of people overthink this type of design. And as you can see, I'm just blobbing on the first color randomly. I'm honestly just focused on evenly spacing them out. So I'm not like overly bunching up the gray in one area. I'm trying to distribute it on the surface of the nail as even as possible so i'm just going in with my nail art brush from amazon linked in my amazon storefront and the color for the gray i used the frosting gel paint from profiles backstage in black and white mixed it into kind of whatever tone that i thought would look good with the rest of the colors that we are using and i honestly didn't overthink it i just put white down and then some black into it, mixed it up, and it was honestly good to go as soon as I mixed it. So that was kind of just a random gray that I was trying to get for her. 
So again, evenly spacing them out for the most part. And then they're really just little blobs of color. You're going to see once you start adding the other colors, the design really starts coming together, especially when you're like kind of putting them in like puzzle pieces. And I'll explain that a little bit more when we move on to the next color. So you want to make sure you are curing in between layers. So for this, I went ahead and did all my gray, popped it in the light for a minute, and then we're going in with our red. This red is also from Profiles Backstage. They have my favorite consistency in gel paint, so I've been using their stuff the most. And now I'm going in again, trying to evenly space those out. And I'm also using like the design that I did with the gray as a guide, if that kind of makes sense. So I'm basically adding in the red a little bit around that gray and even kind of making them fit like a puzzle together and kind of just going with it. Whatever my eyes tell me to do, I'm kind of just doing that. I've gotten really good at imagining it in my brain and then I can see whether it's gonna look good or not, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the red portion again, cure it in the light and then move on to the next color. And we're gonna repeat that with black and white. Now I'm just gonna let you guys watch the rest of this since it's really, really repetitive. And I feel like you guys will learn a lot better if you guys just watch.
Now once I'm done with my camo, I'm making sure that I'm curing it in the light once again. You want to make sure everything is nice and cured before you move on. Now for her right hand, she wanted cherries and lollipops. So that for sure was a given. She wanted that specifically. And so I'm placing the cherries on the ring finger. I'm starting off with a rounded off kind of heart shaped. I think that makes sense. I'm doing the silhouette first. I like to focus on the larger areas when I'm doing intricate nail art and then I go in with the details. So I'm starting off with one cherry and then I'm doing the other one kind of off to the side as well. Same rounded heart shape and then just filling it in. I'm still using the red gel paint from Profiles Backstage so that it matches perfectly. And I'm not overthinking this. I feel like once you go in with the details, it really brings out the actual design. So for the most part when doing this, I'm not really focused on it being super perfect. Now for the index finger, we're doing three little lollipops, one at the top, one in the middle, and one off to the side. And I'm starting off just with a basic circle shape, and then I'm adding two little lines directly across from each other on each side to kind of create that like lollipop effect. And then again, I'm gonna repeat that in the middle and then off to the side, and then we're gonna be going in with our details. Still using my same Amazon nail art brush, for these steps.
Now we're going in with the lollipop sticks, just using white gel paint again from Profiles Backstage. And I'm trying to make it as proportionate as possible to the actual candy itself. So I'm just drawing one coming up from the top. And then the two bottom ones are going to be kind of off to the side, trying to make them as proportionate as possible to every single one of them. So I'm kind of just eyeballing it. And then I'm drawing it on there very, very carefully. And of course, we're going to be curing each layer in the light. I freeze cure it for at least like 10 to 15 seconds. And that normally does a trick. And then I can go in very easily with the next color. I'm adding the little like shine glares that you typically see when doing nail art or any type of art really. It just kind of fully gives that like shiny glared effect. Now I'm going in with my black. Of course, I cured it before this. I'm going in with my black gel paint from Profiles Backstage using the smallest amount on my brush. I am basically using like a sketching motion instead of like one big wipe. I feel like for details so tiny like this, it works best for me. So I'm just outlining the entire design and then I'm gonna be doing two lines connecting the two lines that are sticking out. I don't know if that makes sense, but you'll be able to see it in the video, I hope. I know it's kind of hard to see the details with the glare from the light, but it's better that way versus if I just turn my light off, you're not going to be able to see anything. So I'm starting off with one line connecting out to the outer corners, and then I'm going to be repeating that right underneath. And then we're going to go ahead and repeat that on the other two lollipops. Now we're going in with the details on the cherries. I'm outlining it with black since I already had black on my brush. Just a simple thin outline and then I'm going to be adding kind of like a little crease where the stems are going to be. And then we're going to be adding the stems again. I like to cure in between layers. I know a lot of you guys ask me specifically when and how long. I just pop it in there for 10 to 15 seconds. If you feel comfortable leaving it in there for the full minute, that's perfectly fine. It's just gonna fully cure it. I like to work as quickly as possible. So I just flash cure it in there, 10 to 15 seconds. Again, I'm outlining it and then I'm adding that little crease that I was talking about earlier where the stem is going to be. We're adding the shine glares and then I'm going in with the stem. The green is from Profiles Backstage as well. And I'm just starting off on one cherry right where I did that black little line, bringing it up and then I'm connecting it to the other cherry as well. So one has a shorter stem and the other one has a longer one. And I'm just making it diagonally down into it. And then I'm also adding a leaf kind of coming off the top. And then we're going to be outlining the stem as well.
I can't remember if I already mentioned this, but she didn't know what she wanted on her pinky, middle, and thumb. So I kind of was trying to dig into my brain and think what would look cute with it. And I figured simple drips would look really good with the design that she had, especially on this hand. So I suggested it to her, she agreed. And because the red drips can easily look like blood, I'm going to be adding the same details that I did on the other nails to kind of counteract that, if it makes sense. So I'm drawing my drips first. Very, very simple, one off to the side, and I'm basically doing the same thing on the pinky as well. And then I'm curing that, and then we're going to be adding just a little bit of black and white detailing into it to kind of mute it a little bit and so it doesn't look like blood. And then on the thumb, I did add a bigger cherry. I figured that would go well with it. Um, I'm not showing you guys that process because it's basically the exact same thing. So I'm just applying the drip on the pinky and then curing it and adding in the details. I made sure I popped it in the light one more time for a full minute just so that all the layers are fully cured and now I'm going in with my top coat. She did choose shiny for this video which I love how everything came together. Once you add that top coat you can really see the glitter and it just looks so so pretty. So I'm using gloss it from Not Polish. I am adding a thin layer and really pressing that into the nail art. I talk about it in every single one of my nail art videos that it is important that you really press it into any little creases, divots, or ridges that you might have created with the texture of the gel paint or whatever paint you used for your nail art. So I'm thoroughly covering that. You don't want any little areas exposed. And I'm just, again, doing a thin layer on both hands, placing it in the light for a full minute, making sure that everything is nice and cured. Once we're out of the light, I am adding cuticle oil. You absolutely want to rehydrate the cuticles on your client. This one is from Profiles Backstage. It melts right into the skin, so I very minimally have to rub it in. And it does not leave an oily cast as you would normally see with cuticle oil. It's crucial to not have that, especially if you want to get good pictures or videos. So as you can see, I'm like very randomly just kind of rubbing it in. And then I run my fingers underneath the acrylic nail to make sure that there is nothing that needs to be filed this is something that, that i've gotten used to and i honestly feel like it helps a ton and that way they leave with perfect nails so again just gently rubbing it in and then going underneath the finger with my fingers or i guess i should say the nails with my fingers to make sure everything is nice and smooth but that basically concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys next time. Hey,